a Texas history lesson in a teepee. Hello again, everybody. My name is Dale Caffey. Proud to be on the campus of Tennyson Middle School talking with Mary Duty, who is a history teacher, and she likes to put kids right into history. And you're doing so today, putting them inside a teepee on a very hot, late <laughs> summer day. Yes, indeed. Well, we want to be authentic here, and we want to make the learning connect to what they know as much as possible. And we were talking about these tribes and doing the book work, and it dawned on me, Mr. Bloomer has a teepee that my son used to camp out in, and we should have him come over with his artifacts and, and bring the real stuff to the kids besides what's in the books. Well, talk to me about Mr. Bloomer, who he is, and of course you got him here because you have an association with him. Well, Mr. Bloomer is a wonderful resource to the community. He knows a lot about Native American culture. He is a former scout leader and uh, took the children uh, camping. My son, Caleb, was a scout for years, and they camped in these teepees. There were three of them, and they learned Native American culture from a guy that really appreciated that. And it just, it was just a natural to say, Mr. Bloomer, would you bring you your things? And he's been teaching the kids every hour about how they lived and what they wore. And it's been reaff reaff reaffirming what the kids have done in class. Well, I know that once they get inside, they get warmed up pretty quick, but they seem to be enthused about getting this real taste of Texas history. Right. Well, what, we, what we've been doing, in the beginning of the school year, we learned about the, the regions of Texas, and then we put people in those regions, and we had to figure out how the people adapted to their environment, and so their homes look different, their food looks different, their clothing, and all based on their environment. And so all of our kids had a different tribe that they were looking into, and we did have a chance to bring the Plains Indian in with the teepee. I couldn't build the wiki up. I didn't have enough twigs and branches to do that, but we could have the teepee for the Plains Indian. It worked real well. Very good. Speaking of clothing, you have some young ladies here who are playing the part. Yes, I've got several young ladies that brought costumes that they had used in dramatic productions. Uh, this is a costume that's an authentic costume made by Mr. Bloomer for his wife. Uh, and, uh, and of course, he has some other authentic clothing. But the kids, uh, two kids grabbed a sheet from the uh, fabric store and have created their own uh, interpretation. Anytime a kid can take a, a academic idea and do something with it, and uh, we're, we've created food. We've had, we have venison stew in there. We've got three sisters soup that's an old Indian recipe. They brought uh, prickly pear. The kids have berries, the things that Native Americans ate, and we're going to have this activity, then we're going to have some food, and they'll remember this long after the test is done. You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt about it. And speaking of speaking of making a history book come alive, that's what this is all about. Because this is the really a great way to teach. Well, it is because you know history is so dry and frankly so dead sometimes. Uh, if we can put kids. Uh, they can look at what kids' lives were like for Native American children. They have a connection with it that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And we try to you know, fit all their learning styles. They've been writing and they've been producing uh, art. One child built a cake over there that has all of the elements of a tribe uh, in the cake and, and how they decorated it. Anything that will help Mostly them Mostly symbolically. Remember. I think today's going to be one armor. of those wonderful days that years from now, uh, they will remember the, this day, men, this hot, warriors. miserable day, <laughs> and it is, when they saw Native American culture come to life and when they could honor that people that will take the what they have and work with their environment. It and might and have a little bit of function well as armor, but state. it's mostly... Very duty it's as most always. We love being here. We're going to go try to catch up with Mr. Bloomer and talk to some of the kids. Thank you so much. These are dance sticks that you you, you can you, you, you hold them when you're dancing. Uh, before bells got here, before metal bells got here, they made bells out of deer toes. Call them clackers. And they jingle real good. This device right here is mostly symbolically, it's symbolically armor. It's a breastplate that was worn by the, by the men, by the warriors. And it is, it is actually made of cow bone that were manufactured by the whites and traded for. It might have a little bit of function as armor, but it's mostly, it's mostly decorative armor. Pleased to be joined now by Hank Bloomer. He is the, the owner of the TP and a former scoutmaster here in Waco. Also have Rebecca Hildenbrand and Molly Hep, two students here at the Atlas Academy. First of all, let's turn and talk to Mr. Bloomer. Uh, what do you enjoy about coming to schools, setting up your TP and, and talking about what you know? because it helps to know where we came from and what other people lived on this continent to know where we're going and how to treat the other people that live on the continent now. 
it helps us to get outside of our cell phones and our uh, mm -hmm. our uh, television and to get away from some of the stereotypes and and find out that before we got here there were real people living here doing real things making stuff that uh, that they used living comfortable lives in various kinds of villages and, and clans and uh, I find that fascinating and have for over over 50 years right. and I, I'm enjoy, I enjoy uh, uh, passing it on. Right. And it's my understanding that you used to take scouts camping in this teepee our, where the kids have toured today. Our troop had three teepees. We had two, two very large ones that we made and then this small one. Uh, and yes, we did. We camped in them in all weathers. Uh, the two large ones are, since the troop is not in existence, the two, two large ones uh, belong to Fort Parker now. And we did make those. Got to ask your impressions of the kids behind you, some of which are, uh, some of whom are dressed up uh, Indian style, but other students who have been really into this study. Uh, your impressions of the Atlas Academy and of Tennyson Middle School? I have had very attentive audiences who had good questions, kids who were interested in what were going on and actually seemed to be learning uh, a few things. Maybe they'll even remember them by tomorrow, <laughs> but uh, uh, they've been a good bunch. Very they've been good. a good bunch all around. Well, they will no doubt uh, never forget the time that Hank Bloomer came to school with the teepee, and we thank you so it much, is, sir. It, it is, is and was my pleasure. All right. Let's turn and talk to some young ladies here, Molly Hep and Rebecca Hildenbrand. How are y'all today? Tell me a little bit about your experience and what you enjoyed most about today's lesson. Well, probably what I think we both enjoyed most was getting to learn about the pony beads and that they were actually, the reason they're called pony beads is because they were on the backs of ponies. So that was cool. And what I really enjoyed about this uh, topic is we made our own outfits out of sheets. So. <laughs> well, those are very nice. Uh, tell me a little bit about your face paint and, and who helped you with that, or did you do it yourself? We did it ourselves. Really? What, did you tell me about what you enjoyed most about the lesson. I know she cited some things. Well, I liked learning how much, like about how the Indians lived and how much it's evolved to today and how much it's changed. And you got a good chance to go inside the teepee. Tell me a little bit about that experience. It's completely different from our houses today. Like it's made out of skins and ours is made out of bricks and wood. So it's just right. completely different. Very good, very good. Well, uh, tell me what you enjoy most though about studying a lesson where you get to actually dress up and go inside and see things that are a part of history. Well, probably all of it because even when we were talking about it, um, we decided that for our pre our presentation that we would dress up like Indians and we just got really excited about it and even planning was fun and she wrote the script which I'm really thankful for. Very good. The, the script, tell me about that. Um, it's basically just explaining, you know, about what we, uh, our tribe ate, its house, its clothing and the language. yeah, some of it, the language. It, I mean, the Cherokee tribe had their own language, alphabet. They even had a newspaper, which was very civilized for a tribe. Very good. Rebecca and Molly, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to step over here and look at a nice dessert here. This is Bridget Eichenberg and Harper Hoover, and they're holding a, a cake, I guess. Tell me about this cake. Well, we are the tribe that we decided to study was the Apache Indians. Mm -hmm. And so um, as our product, we wanted to make an edible diorama of what an Indian camp for the Apaches would look like. So this is just... Um, we used brownies for the base because the Apache Indians lived in West Texas. So they had a very hot, dry climate. And um, so we used brown sugar and brownies to represent the West Texas. And we made lit a little teepee um, and a campfire in the middle because the, in the Apaches were nomads. So they would move around and they just had to use teepees. And over here is a... Um, Indian, or I mean a stable that they would put up to keep horses in, so. Yes. Okay, Harper, gotta, gotta ask you this question. Number one is, who came up with this idea, and do you plan to eat this thing just a little bit later and share it with your friends? Um, well, I think we both wanted to do a diorama, and we had seen people last year in Miss Duty's class at the end of the year who had done edible dioramas of landmarks in Texas. So 
of course, I love eating things, so <laughs> I really just wanted to make something that I could eat and um, that you could see what it is and feel what it is and just really get good ideas of how the Native Americans lived. And we are definitely going to dig into this tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Great. Ladies, thank you for joining us. Thanks again to Miss Duty for being here today. As you can see, history comes alive at Tennyson Middle School and the Atlas Academy. This is Dale Caffey reporting from Tennyson Middle School, where there are learners today, leaders tomorrow.